Now in this lecture, I'd like to talk about a few trends that exist in alkane compounds. Now we're going to specifically focus on melting point and boiling point. Now before we get into the trends, let's define intramolecular bonds and intermolecular bonds. Now intramolecular bonds are the bonds between the individual atoms within a given compound. The intermolecular bonds are the bonds between different compounds. Now, here we have two alkanes. We have neopentane and pentane. The intramolecular bonds within neopentane are the carbon-carbon covalent bonds and carbon-H covalent bonds. Likewise, the inter intramolecular bonds in pentane are the carbon-carbon covalent bonds and the carbon-H covalent bonds which are shown. So, for both types of alkanes, and in fact for all alkanes, the intramolecular bonds are covalent bonds. What about the intermolecular bonds? Well, if we just examine this molecule by itself, if we simply have one molecule or one compound, that means we have no intermolecular bonds. Because in order to have an intermolecular bond, you have to have a second compound next to that compound. So, if this is all by itself, we have no intermolecular bonds. If we place this pentane or some other alkane next to our neopentane, these two compounds will attract one another via intermolecular bonds. And in this case, in the case of alkanes, we have van der Waal forces. So the intermolecular bonds of alkanes are van der Waal forces. And these are simply instantaneous dipoles created between the protons found in the nuclei and the electrons surrounding or orbiting those nuclei. So these van der Waal forces exist only for a moment. And that's exactly why they're relatively weak forces uh, compared to bonds like polar bonds. Now, so let's talk about this blue region here. So this blue region on pentane and neopentane represents the van der Waal forces, the instantaneous dipoles created by these two molecules. Notice that this is relatively symmetrical. It looks like a sphere while this has an oval shape. And this will become important when we'll talk about trends and we'll see why in just a second. So, the longer the carbon chain is, the higher the boiling point. So why is that? So what that statement states is that this longer pentane molecule will have a higher boiling point than neopentane, which is shorter and more symmetrical. Now, let's define what a boiling point is. The boiling point is the point at which our pentane goes from liquid, or our neopentane goes from liquid to gas. And that means whenever we go from liquid to gas, we're breaking intermolecular bonds. So that means if this has a higher boiling point, that means the, this guy forms stronger intermolecular bonds. And that's exactly why. Longer, the longer our carbon chain is, the stronger our intermolecular bonds are. Because we have more surface area, we have more van der Waal forces than in this symmetrical case. Remember, whenever we have a sphere, we have the minimum amount of surface area. So, the longer our alkane is, the higher the boiling point is. Now, on the contrary, the more symmetry we have in our alkane, the higher the melting point is. Now, why is that? Well, in a solid, we have a lot of symmetry, right? We have a crystal lattice and we have very well structured molecules. So, because this has more symmetry, it's more compact it will be able to form a better solid. And that means more energy needs to be inputted to break the solid and turn it into liquid. And that's exactly why this neopentane will have a higher melting point because it's more symmetrical and it's able to um, 
compact itself into a solid state much better than this pentane molecule.